everybody and welcome to Hannah's Happy Space. My name is Hannah, thank you for joining me here today. Um, here is um, at home in a town on the edge of Dartmoor in the southwest of England, uh, down in Devon. Uh, today is the uh, 12th of February, Monday the 12th of February. I checked before I started today, <laughs> no guessing today. Uh, it is a very cold but currently dry day uh, here in Devon. Fingers crossed it will stay that way. The sun is currently shining but you never know. Um, like I say today's 12th February so that means here that it is half term week which feels very early because it, it doesn't feel like Sebi went back to school two minutes ago but um, he is not here at the moment. He has gone to stay with his dad for the first half of the half term and he'll be back later in the week. He will be putting in an appearance in this podcast, however. Um, he has taken on the uh, very important responsibility of picking the winner of our little giveaway from last uh, episode. Cara's not here this morning. She, um, on a Monday, takes mum to work. I mentioned a while back that mum broke her ankle. Um, in the last part of last year and she can't walk to work so that's what Cara nips off and does on a Monday morning um, so I take this opportunity to record um, anything major to tell you probably not um, do you know what I don't think there is it's um, been a few weeks when's the last time I saw you about two weeks ago wasn't it um, and it's been two weeks of not much excitement. <laughs> Lots of, I've been at home at the sewing machine. So I will be showing you that later on as well. But let's um, get on with what you're, you are here for. The knitting, the crochet. Yep, got both of those today. Um, and like I say, sewing, but that is shop related. So I'll let you know when we're doing that for those of you who aren't interested. Okay. So should we start with, let's start with what I am wearing. It looks a funny colour on the camera today. I hope, I think because it's a mild yarn, the camera struggles with it a little bit. Got as much light as I possibly can. It's always a struggle this time of year, podcasting with the light. Um, yeah, so this is um, a Felix pullover. This is a pattern by, oh, I forgot to write this bit down, but I, it's uh, Amy Christophers. Um, of savoury knitting. I have made two of these for myself, two Felix sweater pullovers for myself, one for Cara and I've actually cast on a second for Cara. I won't show you that today because um, literally all I've done is the uh, rib on the collar. This version is like I say a mild um, sort of purples and blues. I've shown it on here before um, and then you've got this um, like a chevron lace pattern on the raglan increase. It's an Aran weight pullover. This one has been knit using, ooh, it's a Warcraft yarn. I think is it called Shetland BK? I'll put it in the in the notes underneath. Anything I talk about, um, the information will be below in the description bar at box even, and I will put links in where I can. Like I say, you've you've seen me in this one before. Um, it is one of my favourite jumpers. I've got two of these. I've got this colour and I've got a black and white one, which you'll have seen them here before as well. And I wear them all the time. Um, they are slightly cropped, so I wear them with um, dresses or um, I've got a long black skirt that I wear them with. Super cosy. So I will definitely at some point be making more of these. Sorry, I'm getting even closer. I took me ages to get the camera in the right place this morning. Um, so hopefully I'm right. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's what I'm wearing. Right, let me show you what I've been working on. So I've got two finished objects. To be honest, um, I finished one since I spoke to you last. The and the other was finished. Was it finished? Yeah, it was finished. But I didn't show you it. It obviously I put it in a project bag, put it to one side, um, and didn't show you it. So let me show you it now. 
currently is housed in my uh, Mandalorian bag from Amelia X Joy. Oh, there's the teeny weeny little nugget left over. And let me find. Oh, what was that? Where have I put that? Oh, I know where that is. So, I like you might recognise this from previous episodes I will find my project card and I'll show you now I spoke before don't know when at the beginning of the year that I was going to try and keep a record a bit more of what I have been uh, making over the year I tried you doing a sort of journal one year got as far as I think February probably maybe even the end of January didn't go to plan I was going to try and use Ravelry, which I may still do because I've got a record of what I've been doing, just haven't got around to it yet. What I have been using are these project cards. Um, these are from uh, Franny Do Makes, Fran over there. I will link it below. These are a free download on her website. A double sided, that's obviously, is a blank one. Um, so yeah, I've printed some of these out and I've been using these for my projects and they you just have enough information on that I need or that I want to record. Can I find what I want? Okay. Um, yeah, so they've got, let me show you on the blank one. So you've got your project name, designer, size of variant and start date. So that's the top box. And you've also got um, a box for the yarn, the brand, the weight, the fibre, the colourway. And then needle or hook size, gauge or swatches. And on the back, big space for notes. Then you've got yardage used whoop, and finish date. So I have a filled in one here. And this is what I was looking for. I was looking for the yarn band. So let me show you what I'm waffling on about. This is not going to fit in. That's why I'm not convinced I've got the camera in the right place. And this is not going to show the colour exactly right because this is super bright. This is my Frost at Dawn cowl. And this is Frost at Dawn cowl by Beatrice Perrin Darlin, which is Thraddle, Thraddle, Thread and Ladle. Um, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. Now they've got a sport weight version or a worsted weight yet version. So obviously those two yarns aren't readily available, aren't well, aren't as available over here in the UK. I have used the sport weight yarn um, just because I happen to have it. If I didn't, I could have used four um four ply DK Aaron to fit in with worsted or um sport, just to have a fiddle with gauge. Gauge obviously isn't that important i guess because it's a cowl so just as long as you get the fabric you want it's fine so i have used um stapled it on pixie yarns and this is in your face which is like i say is a sport weight yarn which is 80 percent merino 20 percent nylon um and i picked that up at the oh what was it called stitch fest um stitch fest down in newton abbott in when was that November last year? Let me just have a fiddle and see if I can put this on. So it is a super simple pattern. It has some um, garter rows and oh, steaming up my glasses. Um, oh, words elude me today. Stocking stitch. It's a a mixture of those that tapers down into a point and I have a lovely tassel courtesy of mum on there I'm rubbish at making tassels I don't know why so when we went over to see her one morning oh, just one more though I say she's very good at tassels I'm gonna make another knot there because I'm worried about that sorry just Talk amongst yourselves. Um, concentration face. No, just just in case. So 
she made me a nice little tassel and popped it on for me and like you can see I can pull it up if it's cold but that used like I say nearly the entire skein I have got this little scrap left which will no doubt end up somewhere um so for this i didn't follow the pattern well i ad adapted the pattern is the best thing to say i used 3.75 millimeter needle which wasn't what was called for but i think i used that because that's what i had <laughs> um and i cast on 140 stitches which was in between the two sport weight and the worsted weight um just because i didn't want it to be too tight and oh here we go i use 97 grams of the skein so a really good project for using up those one skeins single skeins if you don't want to use them in in socks so yeah very pleased with it super soft and cozy i haven't blocked it i don't think i need to that is that you can't see the, the tassel is there so that is that one it is really cozy actually i shall get it get it out and use it now um now that I've found what project bag it was tucked away in and that it's finished. There you go. So first finished object. Put that, I will put it back in the bag just for now so I know where it is. That's where it is, don't forget. Okie dokie. So that is my first finished item. Let's have a quick sip of water. Okay, what is next? Next is, I showed you this last time, excuse me, so just sort myself out. Um, showed you this last time I was here. And this is, uh, this is gonna take a while to get used to because normally I'd pick it up with this ball band and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I have put them on handy cards and the cards, I didn't organize myself, did I? Anywho, okay, this is, I don't even have a little scrap of this left to show you. This is my memento shawl, which I had started last time and it was a couple of repeats through. So this is a one skein shawl, like I said, it's called the memento. It is by Jackie Verbeek. This is, um, also available on Ravelry. I should put the links below. This is a paid for pattern. So this is a shawl to use up one of those beautiful single skeins that you might have. As you can see, it's a fair size for one skein, not very deep. Um, so it's more like a shawlette perhaps. Um, as you can see, you've got your garter panels and this um oh chevrons again or oh, arrow lace which after blocking has come out beautifully the yarn isn't showing up quite i mean you can see the speckles they are a little bit brighter but this is um like a lilac-y showing up a little bit might look different on your screens Didn't, it, you might, I might have thought it might have been gray but it is a lilac color and then at the bottom you have these, if it'll hang, um, like a scalloped edge. So it's an I cord cast off with a, a scalloped edge, which is done in blocking. So, like I say, this is a pattern for one skein. And the one skein I used was from Floof Fibres. And it was called Born This Way, that's the colourway. It's a four ply high twist um, and it's an 80% merino, 20% nylon. Now, what I didn't pay attention to was, yes, it's a 100 gram skein, but it is only a 365 metre skein. But like I say, I've got no yarn left and I don't think you'd be able to tell, but I will, I will show you that it, like I say, it's I cord cast off here at the very end from where my finger is to the end is a scrap of yarn, um, lilac colored yarn. 
because I ran out. Um, but it does say at the beginning of the pattern to use a generous or, you know, on the lot further side, further, longer side of a skein. So 400 metres you'd normally get on a 100 gram skein, sometimes 425. And it does say if you've got a 425, go for that one just to make sure you've got enough. But like I say, I used uh, 365 plus that teeny weeny bit. And I wouldn't have needed to have used that if I hadn't have done the optional stretchy eye cord bind off. So to get these scallops in the blocking, it's all curling up a little bit. It has been blocked. So to get this sort of scallop, ooh, scalloped edge in your blocking, um, she suggests a stretchy eye cord bind off. So if you think an eye cord bind off takes a long time, the stretchy bind off takes even longer. <laughs> oh, I was getting a bit fed up with it by the end. Um, and that's so you could then, like it said, shape it into these scallops. You can do the normal eye cord bind off and it would give you a straighter edge. So there we go. So just a little, oh, it smells nice because it's been in Jasmine Euclid. Um, yeah. One little, one little, what am I trying to say? One little, one skein short. <laughs> Not with it this morning. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed making it. Uh, the lace wasn't too difficult as long as you concentrate, um, which I'm not very good at doing sometimes when I'm knitting, especially if there's stuff going on. Um, but yeah, really nice, easy repeat. And another way of using up one of those really nice single skeins. I will probably do this pattern again because I am a nightmare for buying single skeins and then not knowing what to do with them. Some of them sit in stash forever. And I'm sure there's people out there like who are like that too. Um, but this one I did buy specifically for this pattern, but definitely have definitely got more that I could use. Do another little one of these. So, ooh. That is the not quite get it. That is the Memento by Jackie Verbeek. Try and smile. Again, we will a try for a thumbnail. I tell you every time I'm here, oh I try for a thumb. Never happens. Never. Never ever. YouTube's got it in for me. <laughs> right, let's try and fold that up. So those are the only finished objects I have this time, two finished objects. Um, move those out of the way, put that over there. Oh, ooh, they're all gonna slide off then, just put the cards on the arm of the sofa. Okay, work in progresses. So I have got five, five things to show you, three crochet, to knitting i don't know what it is at the moment i've really enjoyed casting on <laughs> um and they're all fairly well through projects it's not like i've cast them on and left them to one side um i keep i keep getting distracted and thinking oh i need to cast something else on or something but i'm telling myself no more five is more than enough um i mean one is a long-term project so it's not like i'm going to be able to work on it all the time which I'll explain when I show you. I'm sorry, just looking over here for what I want in amongst the project bags. Oh, this is in my great big, is he called Snappy from Christmas from the John Lewis adverts? Um, keeping my first work in progress in here. Let's scoop it out. And find this card so i know what i'm talking about i will organize them next time and show you so i know what i'm looking for <laughs> not ruffle through them all so this is the totally toadstools jumper i think i did tell you i was going to make this because yes i had the the yarn come in so i told showed you the yarn and what i, I told you i was going to make with it so I will just show you the 
yoke. I am further on, but the rest is all just plain um, treble stitches. So let me stop waffling. This is, oh, that's gone really dark. Try and get the line in it now. There we go. This is the Totally Toadstools jumper. Um, jumper, yeah, that's right. By Sam Sabido. And as you can see, it has a toadstool yoke. And then the rest of the jumper is just straight. Oh, it's red on there. Oh, it's a stitch marker. I wondered what that was. <laughs> um, what's this? Trebles. UK trebles. US doubles. That is looking really dark there. That's a bit better. It's, um, what's it called? The blue. Deep ocean, like a tealy kind of blue, I guess. Denim y, petrally blue. Any of those blues? It's from uh, Yarn Smiths, the so Yarn Smiths Create Double Knit, which is um, Wool Warehouse's own brand. It is 100% acrylic, 290 meters for 100 grams. So that's that one. Then I have my little samples here of the other colors that I have used. These, all the rest came out of stash. Um, they are all Starcraft special, apart from this luminous pink, which is, I know it's a Shepiers, Shepiers Colour Crafter, Hilversum, I've put in brackets here, pink. Um, so I don't know why I'd need to remind myself. I know the pink is that one, but that's, so that's this one. Um, there's spots, I can't work out where to put my fingers. The spots and the, the stalks are Stylecraft D Special DK in cream. Orange is Jaffa. I think. Yeah, that's yeah. Um the yellow is citron, the green is lime, and the purple is magenta. So yeah, obviously that's the fun bit, <laughs> no Nick. Um, yeah, to do. I see the camera definitely doesn't feel right. Sorry, I'm just gonna tilt you to hope it won't wobble too much. Sorry, great big hand in the way. That's better. Um, yeah, and so I've already split for the sleeves. I am working my way down the body, and it's boring now. I have to be honest, it's boring because. It's easy, but as you well know and can see, I'm a larger person, um, so I'm doing quite a big size, and there is lots of round and round and round and round on a lot of stitches. Um, I really should pick it up and do do a bit more because otherwise it's going to get neglected. I feel um, I haven't got a huge amount more to do on the body. I've probably got I've probably done two thirds of the body before I do the um, rib at the bottom. So I'll probably only have about three, four tops, inches to, of body to do, if that. I need to keep trying it on to see where I want the length. Um, but I'd obviously got to the end of a ball and thought, right, I'll do something else. Uh, and then obviously I've got the sleeves to do. But they won't take very long, I don't think, because it's quite a long yoke. Anyway, when it's finished, I shall show you. So if you don't see it for a while, then um, bug me, won't you? Bug, bug, bug me in the comments and say, get on with it. Right, let me pop that one away. So yeah, that's Totally Toadstools by Sam Speedo. I've done lots of her crochet patterns before. Um, I think you, yeah, you'll definitely have seen on here. The, what's it called? Flower Power Cardigan which is the hexagons with the daisies in. I've made three of those, made one for myself, one for Ruth and one for my friend Sarah. And I've also done her Join As You Go, Granny Square cardigan, 
and anything else so i've got some of her other patterns as well but yes really good crochet pants if you like crochet clothes would highly recommend sam she's on ravel is she on ravelry i got her patterns from etsy or she's got her own website so i'll link them below okay next crochet project you've probably seen a lot of these are doing the rounds at the moment these are in my so you're on delicious bag and this is a good old granny triangle shawl loads of people are doing these at the moment and i can see why they are just such a lovely project to do which makes no sense to me well it does obviously make sense because i love doing crochet and i love granny's trebles that jumper's trebles why isn't that as enjoyable as this probably something to do with the color um so i'm not going to say anything i want to hold it all up oops something that's falling off so as you can see it's quite big <laughs> it's not quite big enough yet it hasn't got the the width um so I decided to do this pattern because who did I see? Um, Fran again, Fran who do makes, had made a beautiful triangle shawl just like this one with one of her advents, and it was um, a fade. Obviously, mine is not a fade, but I really fancied doing the same pattern, and I had lots of leftovers. So I made a, can't really tell from that, I made a magic knot ball. That's the second magic knot ball for this because originally I did 200 grams and oh look at that look at all those colours um sorry yes I made a 200 gram knot ball to start with and I did go through and weigh things because I thought if I've only got like a I'm I'm dreadful for keeping tiny weeny bits I mean I was tidying up earlier. And this <laughs> tiny bit, I thought, oh, these little bits can go in the bin, surely. Let me just gather the end up. I found this little bit. And I, I couldn't bring myself to throw it away. So I thought, I might need that. I need to just, you know, add it in. <laughs> so, anyway, everything in here is about three grams through to just over ten. lots of bright colours that's what you'll have come to learn from me now this is obviously the front the back as you can see bits um i did when i made my magic knot ball obviously did the knots um but didn't snip off the ends so i'm never 100 percent sure so some of them i've been crocheting over as i go if they're in the right place some if they're long enough i might just tuck them in a little bit more before i go around and snip them all off but yeah so i did a 200 gram bowl used all that up when where did that end on this blue bit up here Ooh, up here so from here is the next knot ball and i made um another 100 gram one i don't know how much i've got left my scales let's just have a quick oh guess what we've got i have got 48 grams left so we shall see where that gets me to um if it's not big enough i'll have another route through see what i can find um but yeah i can see me doing another one of these afterwards I just I don't have to think I don't have to even look to be honest um apart from when I get to the end to make sure the last stitch goes in the right place um yeah just really enjoyable I'm do this is all fingering weight yarn all hand dyed yarns um and I am doing it on a three millimeter hook so they're quite small grannies to be honest I probably could have gone up to a three and a half 
but I couldn't find my three and a half hook and I wanted to start. So I started on a three. And it has used up all the leftovers in the first bit, used up all the leftovers from my mystery shawl that I did. So it's not quite, it's not far off, but it's not quite, you know, hasn't quite got the, the width. So ooh, that one will definitely be finished when I see, oh gosh, when I see you next. Because I can't seem to put it down, I have to do a bit on it every day. It was meant to be a knit group project. Um, I haven't done it at knit group at all <laughs> since. I've just been doing it when I want to. So, oh, I love you. So many, so many colours. So that one, yeah, that'll be done next time. That's my little, ooh, little radish. <laughs> Why not? Oh gosh, I'm getting the right old tangle. Right, get in there. Right, that's that one. Okay, how are we doing? Quick slurp again. I haven't had my, my morning cup of tea yet. Got up and got straight into podcast mode. I'm feeling like I need a nice cup of tea. Um, not that you needed to know that. Right, let's, this one. So this is my next crochet project and this is an ongoing crochet project um, and it should have been an incoming but I couldn't wait. So this is, I have signed up for Secret Treasure Box Blanket Club from Green Lampkins Yarn. So this is a subscription every month oh, where you receive four You get four minis, 20 gram minis, it's double knit. I opted for sparkle, obviously. Um, so you get four 20 gram minis of 42 meters each. They are 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 5% stellina. So that's January. And this is, I'm sure you all know Suzanne from Green Lampkin Yarns. This is the first time I've had some of um, Suzanne's yarn and it is beautiful. It is so soft. The colours are beautiful, which I will show you. Just get myself organised. Um, so I also got with this month, whoop, this really sweet little Progress Keeper, if you can focus, just about, that's very sweet, um, so got that one with it, and it's a blanket club, so I'm going to make a blanket, obviously, <laughs> um, so let me show you, I trawled through Pinterest trying to find um, a pattern, Spent a long time looking actually and I watched, must have been Suzanne's latest podcast where she went through and talked about lots of different ideas that you could use for the Blanket Club, knitting or crochet. So if you're um, also having this monthly subscription, it's definitely worth watching that or even if you just want to make a blanket, there's some brilliant ideas over there. I have gone for the Large Sunburst Square. I'm not sure if this is one that's by a specific designer. I will put down, I haven't written it down there actually, have I got it on my card? Um, I will link, oh, I don't think I've done one yet. Uh, anyway, I will, <laughs> I will link the designer that I have used below. I thought I'd written out a card for it. Although something did fall on the floor, didn't it? Oh, hold on. Aha, here it is. So, large sunburst granny square blanket, um, naughty crow crochet. Like I say, I'll definitely link to who I've been using them at the bottom. 
but there were lots there seemed to be a lot of them on Pinterest but that might have just been because it was different people sharing them who knows anyway um so I'm crocheting these on a four millimeter hook let me show you them while I'm waffling these are the centers so I wanted something with some texture rather than too lacy so this one is one two three four rounds for the yeah, four rounds for the central motif. See the sparkle. Um, and then what I'm going to do is square them off with a pale grey. So this grey that I've used is just Stylecraft Special DK, um, which I think will be all right. To be honest, I had a couple of balls of it, so that's why I thought oh, I'll use that. Um, but I'm going to join them as like as you go. So I'm leaving them all in this circle, but then they will become square, and I'll join them as I go. So that is the finished square. So it's five rounds for the entire square, and I could get two two circles out of each twenty gram mini and still have a little little nugget left um about three grams so yes i am keeping all of these and so i will end up with sorry rustling rustle warning i love it when people say that on podcasts as like whenever we're watching them this is my very silly sense of humor They'll say Russell warning and I'll say to Kara, watch out, Russell's coming. So silly. Who is Russell? Why do we need to be warned about him? These are the four little nuggets that are left. So they will go into a project. Um, I don't know what. So if I get, so you get four every month and there are about, about three grams each left. So three, six, nine, twelve. And I'm going to get twelve all together. Together. So 12, 12 is 124. Sebi's doing times tables at the moment. That that probably helped me with that quick quickish maths. So 124 grams, double knit, easily could be mitts, could be a little cowl. It will be something. So I'm just keeping them in there at the moment. Let me show you the other colours. So the there's no theme as such to these. It's the secret treasure box, so they're all just individual beautiful colors so that's the first one then there's this pink and red again with a bit of sparkle and like i said the yarn is so soft it's really lovely to work with um yeah so that one so i've got two of those and this one nice and bright and Sebi says it reminds him of Tutti Fruities, so the sweets. So two of those. And finally, this pretty pale blue with pops of green and purple in there. And that's two of those. So that's the first month of those and just try and gather them all up so you can sort of see them together there you go so that's january's blanket secret treasure blanket so i get eight out of these eight squares a month so what's that? Eight times 12, oh, more maths, 96 squares. So it's going to be a nice size blanket. Um, like I say, I'm going to join as I go with the grey and I'm going to wait until I've made all of them, I think, to join them because I've got two of each. I want to try and work out the placement. I don't want to put two together or, you know, do repeat or I don't know how I'm going to lay them out. So I'm going to make all these. I'm going to sew the ends in and then join them as we go when we get to it right pop all those bits in there oh sorry russell's back right that's that one 
That is for all the crochet. <laughs> okay, knitting whips. Two knitting whips. <coughs> Excuse me. So, first knitting whip is in my ghosty tote. And this, this is going to be difficult to show you because, like the bag, it is black. Okay, so I bought a lot of this. It's exciting, isn't it? Black acrylic DK, which is Women's Institute Premium Acrylic Yarns. Um, from Hobbycraft here in the UK. So yeah, this is 100% acrylic. Um, I bought, this is always on three for two in Hobbycraft. So I bought nine balls of this in the hope to crochet a cardigan. Alex from My Yarn Corner, you will know all about this. As I tried to crochet a cardigan, had some problems that we chatted about and that got ripped out and is now becoming a knitted cardigan. So I will put a picture in of what it is going to be so you know where we're going. This is the Harvest, which is a cardigan by Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern, so I'll put a picture in now. I have made one of these before and I made one in um, Stylecraft. Aaron, which is a, a wool acrylic blend. Um, like I said, it was an Aaron, so it's a little bit what chunkier. This double knit feels a little bit thicker to me than any of the other acrylic double knits that I've used. When I was crocheting with it, I was using it on a four and, on a four and a half hook. So obviously I could use it in a, in a heavier weight pattern so i've tried to get to this is going to look like nothing it's not going to be look like anything if i can't show you it because it's so what have i done here right let me just wind this up now the yarn is is fine for an acrylic yarn not a problem um but it's got a funny smell and when i knit with it my hands smell funny um, so I'm hoping it'll wash out. I don't know if anybody else has used this yarn before. It's had the same issue. I can't quite, it's like a plasticky smell. Obviously it's a plasticky yarn. It doesn't feel plasticky, but it, oh, he was sniffing it. It, um, it smells a bit like hot, you know, like when something plastic's got hot, it smells like that. And I can't, so hopefully it'll wash out. I don't know. Hopefully it'll wash out. Anyway, this is a top down top down cardigan let's see if you can see anything nope so i have split for the sleeves i don't i don't know how to show you um and i am about six inches under the armpit um so this like i say it's knitting the round you knit this um doesn't look like anything does it you knit this garter stitch no you knit the garter stitch um collar and but button bands all the way as you go um i'm not going to do it as long as it is in the pattern it's quite a long cardigan the other one i made is but i want this to wear with um some of my dresses and my dungarees so i'm going to do it sort of hip length so I think I will probably knit another couple of inches before I start the um, the guard stitch. Get this <laughs> guard stitch. You can sort of see it's bumpy there, maybe. Or am I just clutching there? Um, yeah. You do that that guard stitch band at the bottom as well. And that's on the cuffs as as well. For this. But. It, I promise you, there's a cardigan there, um, and there will be a cardigan when it's finished. It might be, it might show up. 
you'll be able to see what it is when I'm, I'll, I'll wear it and then you'll know I was just looking to see what size needles I've used um and annoyingly then I like I have all my um interchangeables are knit pro symphony but the um sizes all rub off these are knit pro symphonies they are a five mil needle and like you see I mean it is a slightly looser fabric than obviously the Aran weight that I've used. Um, but uh, the gauge is fine, I'm happy with the fabric. So, yeah, it will be a cardigan. Oh, that purple's where I've split for the um, arms. I've got it on my shelf. Um, I am using, whilst I knit this, the Tin Can Knits app. I think I've spoken about it before when I knit um, Harry's flax sweater. It's such a good app. Um, obviously, these are this is a free pattern, so the pattern is on the app. You can download it from there, I think. Um, but I can't show you the app because it's on my phone. I'm filming on my phone. You, you could set up a whole project for it, so you can put in who it's for, what you're using, what yarn you're using, um, what needles you're using, everything. And then you select the size that you want to knit, and it it just shows you that part of the pattern so you don't have to like you know when you look in the brackets and think oh i have to do the third one along whatever it only tells you what to do and if it's like a section that says you know do this do row one do row two and then it'll say repeat this repeat those two rows 20 times you can you can count it as you go so you just keep clicking and it adds it all up for you it's really good so yeah, that's that one. A cardigan. I promise, I promise a cardigan. Oh. One more. One more item to show you, which is in this bag here that I have made myself. <laughs> Something else in there. What's that? Oh, it's the bits and bobs from I'll put that somewhere I saw the cards from my um I used that bag when I was doing my mementos the through fiber I should put this in the cupboard as well you get a little um ukulele. anyway yeah that's one of my bags love this fabric um anyway what was I, what's in there what am I knitting I am knitting, do, 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 do. I piled all these up because they all fell on the floor. I am knitting a hitchhiker. I shall put a picture in now. I'm sure everybody out there knows what a hitchhiker is because it's a pattern that's been around for ages. Um, I'm just late to the party. This again is a brilliant one skein shawl and um at Christmas, Laura, my local yarn shop owner from the Woolly Beader, very kindly gifted us all a Lucky Dip skein of yarn. I picked out a Salva Ball. And I love this yarn because it's so lovely. I don't like the ball. Yes, it looks nice, but they're not very tightly wound. And like you can see, so as soon as I start using that bit, all that will fall off. And then you have to rewind it, excuse me. Um, rewind it all up and oh, that's just me. Um, okay, Hitchhiker by Martina Ben. Ben, I hope that's right. Um, like I say, this is a Shoppel Zalba ball. And this is a 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamide. And the color is Indish Rosa. German is it they are they a German company I think aren't they so hopefully I've said that right I was just going to see if I can see the colorway sorry on the card but I've stapled the card to this project card so now I can't see oh there we go No, not going to focus. 
The details will be below. Indish Rosa. I-N-D-I-S-C-H. Anyway, that's the colourway. All these beautiful pinks and purples and reds. And this is how far I am. So, let's see if I can hold it this way. So you get all these little points um, and you get 42 of them, which is a reference to Hitchhiker, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. What have I got? Oh, that's my Stormtrooper. So I know which is the front. Um, Oh, little froggy needle stoppers and I am using a three millimetre needle. Didn't it? This is very, it is a fingering weight yarn. It's a fine fingering weight yarn, I would say. Um, oh gosh, sorry, it's all tangled up. But yeah, it's a nice, easy pattern. Got a stitch beautiful colours that's I think this is going to look lovely once it's finished it's a great I saw on um the Ravelry project page a lot of people have used samples I think the way the colours come out works really well um so I have done one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four um, of these points so I'm over halfway but obviously the rows are longer now so it takes a little bit longer um, like I say it's an eight row repeat really easy to to remember and I'm just doing a little bit of that every now and again when I fancy a change from the other projects so hopefully it won't take too much longer possibly um, will become my knit club project because um, my granny triangle was meant to be that and I've nearly finished it <laughs> so that's going away oh and that is that gosh sorry that's taken a lot longer than I thought it would um I have just quickly got um an incoming I'm looking down again you know my notes are underneath you and I'm just making sure I haven't forgotten anything um I've shown you the project cards plenty from Fran again they will be linked below in Coming, where's that gone? Oh, here it is. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen this anyway, but I'll very quickly show you because I know it's taking a while. This is my incoming. So this is um, from Alex and Danny over at My Yarny Corner. And this yarn is called Sebi's Candy Floss. Um, it's a 100 grams, 400 meters, four ply, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. So, um, Alex and Danny over at My Arnie Corner, ha Corner? Corner. <laughs> have a podcast. I will link it below. I think I've linked it a fair few times. Um, once a month, they on their channel do a live dye where they dye up yarn. Um, and I was watching it one month and Sebi saw and loved it um so he'd watched that on it wasn't live when he was watching it because I hadn't I hadn't been able to watch it live so I was re-watching it and he saw it and thought it was brilliant this one that's just been was a little bit earlier in the evening um so he was able to stay up and watch it and he oh he loved it absolutely loved it he he has dyed yarn with me before um, and obviously he's surrounded by yarn here, so he doesn't get a, he doesn't get a choice. He likes yarn, <laughs> um, but we watched the live die, and he was really enjoyed like the joining in. He loved it. He's like, oh, send a message in, send another message in. I had to keep saying to him, look, it's not it's not just me and you watching. There are other people watching. It's not just me, you, Danny, and Alex. Um, <laughs> But he said, you know, he got involved with suggesting the colours. So if you suggest colours, they help, they, you know, you might get those dyed up. Um, and this was in the pan and Sebi said to me, oh, it looks like candy floss. So I messaged in and said, you know, Sebi says it looks like candy floss. And very kindly, they named it Sebi's Candy Floss. When I showed him the photo of this, 
uh, he was he's oh my god oh my goodness oh my goodness so that's so cool Whoa, you know so we had to buy it um which i did and then i put the little video of sebi um opening it up he suggested i make a shawl with it um how many 10 year old boys know what a shawl is very sweet anyway i think what i might do actually is buy some pale gray yarn to go with this and i might make a stripy tolster with it um yes but thank you so much uh alex this absolutely made his day and like i say he did he loved watching it and i think um also dan um alex's partner danny does the dyeing and it i think it is very um well it's great to see a guy so i know there's lots of guy knit man male knitters out there designers everything but to see someone so happy being creative i think it's very inspiring for young boys um so thank you very much that's that's that one okay that is everything um that i've made wanted to show you etc um, so, <coughs> sorry, my voice is getting all croaky now. Because I've been jabbering on for too long. Um, I'm not going though. I, hi everyone. Um, I've just sneaked this little bit in before the, um, the shop update because I completely forgot about the giveaway. It's just ridiculous. Um, so <laughs> last time I, um... Told you guys we were going to have a giveaway for um, reaching a thousand subscribers. Completely forgot. It's when I started showing the bags in a minute, the rainbows made me think, oh. So the giveaway was for this rainbow bag, what I've made. This beautiful skein of yarn donated by Ruth, which is um, felt fusions, heart on heart on your sleeve ish, and. Some stitch markers um sebi has picked us a winner and i will put the video of that in after this um if the person who i won't tell you this this is all in the completely wrong order the person who wins please message me um instagram's probably easiest way of doing so so congratulations to the winner thank you everybody who um participated there was lots of you thank you so much um and um sebi will tell you who the winner is thanks okay sebi has all the names for the giveaway and he's going to pick a winner for us now okay and the winner is mouses makes oh there you go. Just not focusing, hold on. There we go. Mouses makes. Have got um a shop update, got some bags to show you. So if you're not interested in that, absolutely fine. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you again next time. If you are staying to have a look, I shall show you quickly now um the bags that are going into the shop update. My shop is on Kofi, it will be linked below. It is linked on my Instagram. Um, if you just head over to Kofi, I think I'm just put in Hannah's Happy Space. You should find the shop. Um, any problems, let me know. So I have got 12, 12 bags going into this um, update. And I will, like I say, just quickly go through. Let me just find my other. I've got a bit here that tells me what roughly the sizes are. So I'll run through them really quickly. So we have got some small bags. This is the smallest. Um, it's slightly smaller than my normal small bags because it is the same fabric from my bag and I just wanted to use it use it up. So it's slightly smaller. This one is eight and a half inches. These are all approximate sizes. Eight and a half inches um, tall by nine inches wide. It has got bright pink lining. Um, they're all drawstrings. They are all lined, but they are not um, interfaced or they don't have wadding or anything in them. They are a flippy floppy bag. Um, yeah, it is slightly smaller, like I say, but you can still definitely fit small projects in, small amigurumis. 
um, one skein shawls, socks, that kind of thing. So there we go. That's that one. Why is that gone red? Sorry. I'm just hoping nothing weird will happen in a minute. My time has gone red on there. Um, yeah, so there's that one. Let's go a bit quicker just in case. So these are all, um, the next ones are my small bags, nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches. This is um, Tigers by Tula Pink. And it has green starry lining. So that's that one. There will be um, all the information will be more detailed on the listings over on the shop. Next is this rainbow fabric with flowers at the top. And this one has a peach flowery lining. Again, that's a small size. Um, then more rainbows, a bit different with the blue top. And the lining is just um, seeded cotton. And the, is there one more small bag? Yeah, one more small bag. No, sorry, it's two more small bags. So this bright flowery design. And this one has a navy, dark navy blue lining. And the last small one is more rainbows. This is the neon rainbows, pinks, and the lining is purple stars. So those are the small bags. Then I have a slightly larger bag, but this time these bags don't have handles like the others. They have a free motion design on. These sheep bags are 11 inches high by 9 inches wide, and there's three of these. So this is uh, the blue sheep. These all have a seeded cotton lining, the same as the panel that the sheep is on. So there's the green and blue sheep, purple sheep, and finally the pink sheep okay so that's those three and then we have three large bags these are 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches um so we have cats again let me just double check all three of these are again lined with the seeded cotton so we have cat bag, giraffes, and finally floral. Okay, so that is all the bags um, that are going into the shop update. They will be in the shop tonight, um, February the 12th, from 7 pm. GMT so UK time um yeah so thank you so much everybody for watching um hope you've been, enjoyed uh like comment subscribe all those things are all very much appreciated and I will see you again in a couple of weeks time thanks everybody bye